In this video, we're going to look at a few examples of infinite series, and without performing the whole convergence test, um, we're just going to think about what convergence or divergence test um, would be best to use and what clues in the series um, indicate which test is going to be most appropriate. So let's see here. This should say convergence. Um, slash divergence. Um, our first example here, we have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n times the square root of n squared plus 1. So I notice that this is not a p-series or a geometric series, but it is made up of powers of n. So that indicates to me that I should try a comparison test. Um, probably the limit comparison test is going to be easier. So here I want to use limit comparison test and I want to compare to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over and I notice that the highest power of n in my denominator is going to be made up of n and the square root of n squared. Okay, so just for thinking about what to compare it to, we ignore constants, we're just sort of interested in the highest power of n. So notice that that would mean that I should compare this to 1 over n squared. Okay, so the clues here were that this was made up of powers of n, and then I determine what to compare it to by looking at, um, in this case, just what my highest power of n in the denominator is. Okay, since I have multiple powers here, I have to multiply the n times the square root of n squared here to get what the overall highest power of n in the denominator is. Okay, so what about this next example? So I'll just kind of write down here, this is powers of n that are involved. Here I have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n over n plus 1 to the 2n squared. So here I do have terms raised to not just n, but 2n squared, but because everything is being raised to this um, function of n, I'm going to think about using the root test. So notice that would involve me looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1 to the 2n squared to the 1 over n. Okay, I don't need the absolute value bars here because these terms are always positive. So notice that that will result in the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1. This will be 2n squared um, to the 1 over n, which means I would multiply those, or I'd have 2n squared over n, so that'll end up being to the 2n power. So notice that as n goes to infinity, n over n plus 1 would be going to 1, and 2n would be going to infinity. So notice that this is a 1 to the infinity indeterminate form, okay? So that will require several steps to take that limit. So see separate video on this example to remind you how to handle those 1 to the infinity type forms that sometimes arise in ratio and root test um, problems. Okay, But having this raised to this 2n squared power is what's indicating to us that we should try the root test. So what about this next, let's see, see separate video on that example. Um, here in example 3, I have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n over n squared plus 2. Okay, so I do have something that's not all positive terms here. This is not strictly a p-series. Um, it's, so I guess you could say it's similar to a p-series, but the fact that I have this negative 1 to the n here out in front indicates that this is an alternating series. So as soon as I see something with that negative 1 to the n, I'm going to think about trying the alternating series test as long as my bn part does seem to be going to 0. So notice that this is an alternating series with bn equals n over n squared plus 2. Okay. Well, notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n squared plus 2 would be equal to a limit as n goes to infinity after dividing um, my numerator and denominator by this highest power of n that I have in the denominator, n squared. I'm going to have 1 over n over 1 plus 2 over n squared, so this is going to be equal to 0. And then I'd have left to show that bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn. Okay, so we're not going through all of the details of these tests here, we're just sort of seeing 
what our procedure is going to look like, um, and what clues told us um, that that was going to be an appropriate test to use. So seeing this negative 1 to the n here does tell me this is alternating, and it seems like the alternating series test is probably going to work out for us, but we will need some additional work here to show that the bn plus 1 is less than or equal to bn. So what about this next example? I have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times n over n plus 2. So this is an alternating series because I do have that negative 1 to the n here. But notice that my bn's here, okay, which are nice and positive, um, are those actually going to 0? Well, the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 2 is going to be equal to 1. Okay, So we can't use the alternating series test. Okay, But getting the limit of those terms being something other than 0 indicates that we should try the divergence test. Okay, So notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of my terms themselves, negative 1 to the n times n over n plus 2, that limit is not going to exist because it's going to be oscillating between 1 and negative 1. Okay, so this negative 1 to the n here means that I'm either going to have an n over n plus 2 type term or a negative n over n plus 2 type term. It's going to alternate back and forth. So the terms themselves are definitely not going to 0. They're um, going to either 1 or negative 1 alternately. Okay, so because that limit doesn't exist, the series is going to diverge by the divergence test. Okay, so sometimes you can see something that is alternating, but in the end maybe you can't use the alternating series test. So we try another test. In this case, the divergence test will be helpful. Okay, You could have looked at this right away and realized this n over n plus 2 isn't going to 0, and gone right away and tried the divergence test. Okay, so what about this next example? I have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n squared times e to the negative n cubed. So my first thought in looking at this series is to realize that um, it wouldn't be too bad to use the integral test. Okay, So my thoughts on why to use the integral test here is because I see that f of x would be equal to x squared e to the negative x cubed, and I realize I could use a u substitution to integrate 1 to the infinity of x squared e to the negative x cubed dx, okay, would use u sub, okay. I also notice that f of x here is positive for x greater than or equal to 1. It's also continuous for x greater than or equal to 1. And I'd have to do a little work to show f of x is decreasing, but it seems reasonable that it probably is. Okay, so just my first thoughts when I look at this is, oh, I could integrate that. That's not too bad to integrate. Now the question is, do we have any other options? Because usually the integral test is going to be kind of our last choice because there is, are so many steps involved. Um, I notice that this is not um, a p-series or a um, geometric series itself, and it seems like it might be sort of hard to do a comparison to one of those. But because I do have an exponential function involved in this, and this, this I could also write this as n squared over e to the positive n cubed, and this e to the n cubed, okay, that's an exponential function. So I could try the ratio test on this. Okay. Now this is not what occurred to me as the most obvious choice to begin with, but the ratio test will work. I don't have just a power of n by itself. I do have this exponential function involved. So notice that that would involve me looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 um, squared over e to the n plus 1 cubed. Okay, that would be my a n plus 1 divided by a n, which would be e to the n cubed over n squared. Okay, So notice that the n plus 1 squared over n squared part, that will go to 1. 
which would, if the uh, other terms here <coughs> also made the limit go to 1, we'd be inconclusive. But fortunately, the e to the n cubed over e to the n plus 1 cubed is not going to be going to 1. So just to sort of show what happens with this, we would have um, a limit here as n goes to infinity. I've got this n plus 1 squared over n squared piece. I would have this e to the n cubed over, notice that this e to the n plus 1 cubed would be e to the n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. Okay. So this um, e to the n cubed, if I brought it down to the denominator and wrote it as e to the negative n cubed, I could then add the negative n cubed to my long power here. So that would become just e to the 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. Okay. So notice that the limit as n goes to infinity of this 1 over e to this big power here would be 0. Okay, so this term here would be going to 1, this term would be going to 0, so I would get something that's less than 1. So I can use the ratio test to show this convergence, but you could also use the integral test. Okay, so notice that sometimes there will be multiple tests that you could use, just maybe that one is a little bit easier to implement than another. And in other cases, maybe only one test is really going to be appropriate. So just a couple more examples to take a look at. Here I have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, 2 to the 4n, all over 2n plus 1 factorial. As soon as you see that factorial, this is going to indicate that you should try the ratio test. Okay. Um, we do have some negative power in here, it is alternating, but that factorial right there indicates you're going to try the ratio test. Remember, the ratio test is going to have you look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of your terms of an plus 1 over an. So when we would do the absolute value of our terms here, the absolute value of that negative 1 to the n would just be 1, okay, because negative 1 to the n means for different values of n here, sometimes that's going to be negative 1 and sometimes it's going to be 1, but in absolute value that'll always be 1. So we'll just be dealing with 2 to the 4 times n plus 1 over 2 times n plus 1 plus 1 factorial divided by the a sub n, which would be this 2n plus 1 factorial over 2 to the 4n. Okay. So the negative 1 to the n in absolute value is just going to become a 1, so I don't have to write it there. Okay, so that's what I would have to look at there in trying the ratio test. Okay, so just a couple more here. Give us a few other examples to think about. Here I have a sum from n equals 1 to infinity. 1 over n plus n times cosine squared n. So as soon as I see this cosine squared n here, I'm thinking about some kind of comparison test. And the reason for that is cosine squared n is, um, well, it's always going to be positive. Um, and I also know that cosine squared n is bounded by something. So that's part of why I'm thinking maybe I can do some kind of um, inequality type comparison with this. So notice that cosine squared n is less than or equal to 1. We know that our cosine function is always between negative 1 and 1. Cosine squared n will be no bigger than 1. If I multiply both sides here by n, I have n cosine squared n is less than or equal to n. And then we can also add n to both sides. So I have n plus n cosine squared n is less than or equal to 2n. Okay. Now if I look at the reciprocal, we have 1 over n plus n cosine squared n is greater than or equal to 1 over 2n. Okay, And we know that 1 half times the sum of 1 over n diverges okay, by the p-series test. Since that sum of 1 over n is a p-series with p equals 1 less than or equal to 1. Okay, so we'll be able to show that this diverges by the comparison test. Um, another way to have seen this 
is if I factor that n out of the denominator and I see that's n times 1 plus cosine squared n. That's another way to see I, I might want to be doing some kind of comparison to a sum of 1 over n. I have that 1 half there out in front because 1 plus cosine squared n okay, will be less than or equal to 2 since cosine squared is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so then I can see how multiply both sides by um, n here, and then again I'll get this 1 over um, n plus cosine squared n is bigger than 1 over 2n. Okay, so when you see those trig things in there, sometimes you want to think about some kind of inequality to use in your comparison. Okay, one final example. So here I have a sum of n equals 1 to infinity of e to the 1 over n, n squared. Here you can use the integral test. Again, the, the thing that maybe indicates that the integral test is going to be useful is because you realize that you know how to integrate e to the 1 over x over x squared dx because we can use u substitution since if u equals 1 over x, du would be negative 1 over x squared dx. Okay, But of course, that's not the easiest technique here. It's actually a little easier to use the limit comparison test. Okay, what indicates the limit comparison test? Well, I have um, this e to the 1 over n divided by n squared. So I can think about comparing to the sum of 1 over n squared, which we know converges by p-series test. And then I'd be looking at a limit as n goes to infinity of e to the 1 over n over n squared divided by 1 over n squared, so times n squared over 1. So this would be a limit as n goes to infinity, excuse me, n goes to infinity of e to the 1 over n. As n goes to infinity, 1 over n is going to 0, so that would be going to 1. Okay, so we want to keep straight. This is why we always have to write down um, what was important about the, the value that we got here. For the limit comparison test, it's okay that we got 1 because we can draw a conclusion from the limit comparison test as long as our limit value is finite and positive. If this had been a ratio test that we were doing, getting um, one means it's inconclusive. Okay, so we gotta keep straight what kind of conditions go with our various tests. Okay, so this gives you hopefully a little more idea of what to be thinking about, but the best way to um, practice what test to use is going to be to do lots of practice problems. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions.